All right, we're just going to keep this real simple. Gonna square this up on this piece of aluminum here. Like that, and then just trace it out. Trace in those radiuses. Okay, and that is the bottom. This flange over here is going off to the left side. So, put a B on that for bottom. And we'll flip this over on the same line. Trace it out again. That'll be our top. Okay, so I went in and I grabbed my filler cap. I'm going to mount this kind of over here in the corner, roughly like that. The diameter of the outside diameter of the filler neck, at least the hole that we need to cut. Let's see. Hopefully, you can see that without any glare. This is measuring in at just under, it's about a 32nd, or no, it's about a 16th under an inch and a half. So, we're going to drill an inch and a half inch hole. And I want it over here in the corner, like this, but I don't want it way up here in the corner, real close to either edge. I want it in about a half an inch. So half of inch and a half is three quarters of an inch, plus a half an inch would be an inch and a quarter in from the edge. So, that like that. Same on this edge. Make sure that's dry. So, right there is where, where we're gonna punch a hole. This hole over here, for the, for the tube to go down into, uh, from the radiator, we're just gonna give that some arbitrary numbers yeah we'll go we'll do we'll do the same thing inch and a quarter from each edge so there's just a little bit of symmetry there so we'll punch those holes out and then we'll cut out both of these uh the top plate and the bottom plate and uh then we'll get cracking on the uh bracket uh that we need to fabricate
All right, so off camera, I took the grinder and I rounded over these, these corners right here and kind of fit the pieces uh, to the uh, reservoir itself. Uh, those, rough, those were just rough cuts I made with the uh, jigsaw. So now these, these fit, got a nice fit all the way around. I did that on both the top piece and the bottom piece. So we're ready to move on. We, get, we need to uh, start working on the bracket that goes off the side here. So to do that, uh, we need to mount our, our reservoir uh, back to the jig we made earlier. So after a little bit of measuring and looking under the hood and everything, I had to re-drill these holes a little bit closer to the edge here. If you remember earlier in the video, uh, I mentioned that I have a like a Chinese or a Taiwan repop core support, which doesn't have these mounting brackets. Uh, it has the one up here uh, for the uh, off the battery tray, but the ones in the core support are missing. So I gotta I gotta put those holes in myself. So uh, I can put those wherever I want uh, at this point. So I drilled. I, I re-drilled this one a little bit over and then I went and took a few more measurements and kind of looked at it some more and realized that I needed to drill these uh, even closer to the edge. So uh, these are the holes that we're actually going to use. And then I've made some marks. we got a mark right there. I'm going to get the... There we go. We have a mark right there and we have a mark uh, right there. That's as low. This is the bottom of the reservoir. That's as low as it's gonna go, and then these lines right here line up with the holes. So, I wanna move this back enough so that I have a nice flat mating surface for my fastener to go through. But I still need basically about an inch between the back of the reservoir and the battery box, the, uh, the little leg for the battery box. So, with it in this position right now, I've got an inch and a sixteenth, so that'll work. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna clamp the reservoir to the jig, and we'll kinda turn it over, and we'll mark those holes through the jig into the aluminum, then we'll drill those holes. Well, it's all finished and I just got to go ahead and tell you guys uh, something happened I lost a lot of footage I lost about a third of the footage that I filmed making this so almost all the footage I had of welding this up I think we just left off making this bracket right here on the side uh, not sure how it happened but uh, like I said it was about a third of the footage or about an hour and a half of footage so tank is actually complete it's been installed I took it out so that I could kind of make put finish off this video and, and show you guys uh, what I am going to do right now uh, there was a little bit of footage uh, that I still have because I filmed it on my phone and it's arc shots it's all arc shots of uh, welding in uh, these brackets doing the welds here on the sides welding the top and the bottom and the, and the little bung the filler cap well, no, that is. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in that right now, and, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about this some more.
so let me fill you in on, uh, on what you missed. Well, starting with kind of where we left off in the last video, I did get my new gas lenses and I put one in and it helped. It didn't cure all the problems. It didn't make the welding go a lot better, but it helped. And I mentioned that it was probably a combination of uh, torch components or you know, any sort of uh, equipment malfunction, uh, my technique or my settings on the machine. And what I found was, one, it was the gas lens, putting the new gas lens on did help. The second one was adjusting the machine. And what I had to do was uh, add in more uh, electrode positive, adjust the AC balance and add more electrode positive. That helped a lot. It still didn't, in a lot of areas, still didn't come out as nice as the welds did on the uh, fan trail project, but it did make it a lot better. So, uh, so we'll go over everything. This right here on the front, this is a vent line. And I don't have the original uh, coolant reservoir because I already threw it away. But in that reservoir, there's a little loopy thing right at the top and that was the vent. This only has to be watertight. This is not a pressure vessel like the radiator. The, the radiator, the cooling system is pressurized 10 to 15 PSI, uh, depending on the vehicle. The coolant reservoir is not pressurized. It only has to be watertight. So uh, this is a vent line if it gets too full. Now this, you only fill this up about a third. This, this doesn't go to the top. It, al it allows room for expansion. That's one of the reasons these are often termed expansion tank. It allows coolant to be to either come out of the cooling system into the reservoir or to be drawn out of the reservoir back into the cooling system. So it really only fills up to about a third of the volume. And then this vent line, if it gets too full, it's obviously gonna bleed out here. And so I added uh, this fitting and this little piece of tube, I left it pretty long so that I could drape it down through the, the apron, the fender skirt, kind of under the frame a little bit so that if it ever does get too full when it vents it's just going to fit underneath the truck and it's not going to collect kind of there in the bottom of the core support so that's pretty much about it uh i had i had to i, I water tested it i, I leak tested up uh, leak tested it i should say and there were a couple areas along this seam right here that i had to touch up one area on the bottom i had to add a little bit of go in clean it re-weld it a little bit add a little bit of material and so it's watertight now i've double checked it so let me take you over to the truck and i'll show you uh, how i had it mounted and if you remember i had to uh since my core support is like an import aftermarket kind of thing it doesn't have every single mounting location for all the components that mount to the core support specifically the the uh, coolant reservoir these two for these two mounts right here i had to uh drill those holes myself this mount over here off the little brace on the battery tray that was still there and so i used that one and i had to put some uh, new ones in the course board so we'll go over to the truck and i'll show you those real quick so you're looking dead on at the battery let me pan down a little bit here's the little brace holds up the battery tray this was the one mounting location that I did have. What I did is I drilled that out. One, it, well, it just had a, a through bolt with a nut on the backside. I drilled it out and ins inserted a rev nut or a nut zert, threaded insert, whatever you want to call these. Drilled it out, put in a nut zert. You see a little trail down here. It's been my experience in the past that it's not hard to get these rev nuts to spin if you tighten them down too tight or anything like that. Put your, your fastener in there too tight. So I've gotten in the habit of actually putting some red Loctite uh, on these fasteners when I go to put them in. So this is a little bit that dripped down and I haven't wiped it off just yet. Come over here, look straight at the core support. Here's another hole. This one I had to drill. This I had to actually drill it in its location. There was no existing uh, hole or amount there for the reservoir itself. So this is the upper one. Go down here. There's a lower one, and the, again, you can see kind of the trail there that I need to wipe off. That was the red Loctite that I put in there. So that's how I got it mounted up, and I'll, I'll put it back in the truck, and then I'll, I'll show you that. All right, so there it is, fully installed. 
see the hose here coming off the radiator down into the reservoir it goes all the way to the bottom there's about a quarter inch uh, between uh, the bottom of the reservoir and the uh, bottom of the tube itself and then of course we got our vent line which goes down there kind of between the fender inner fender and the frame over here I put a spacer in there uh, somewhere I got off with my measurements or my fabrication and when I went to go install this thing it was almost there not quite it was about an eighth of an inch off now I could have just put a bolt in there and kind of wrenched it down and it would have sucked it right in but I found that before I went to the hardware store uh, to get the hardware to mount it and so while I was there I just picked up this little half inch wide spacer and then came back and drilled my holes and put the nut certs in and everything like that so that's the reservoir mounted inside the truck so uh, we'll move back over to the workbench and uh, finish off this video well once again I apologize for losing that footage that good about hour and a half of footage and it really was based on the comments that I read it's the stuff that you guys want to see uh, it's the fitting it's the tacking it's the welding it was basically all of that so I apologize for that happening it won't happen again and uh, but I still I, I do have a lot of pictures of how I set it up and, and how I got welded and, and everything pictures from the lost footage I should say uh, pictures that I took on my phone so we'll put a bunch of those here at the end of this video and then again you can go to my Facebook page facebook.com slash milk milk crate 82 and uh, there'll be all the pictures will be posted there so uh, again, I apologize uh, for kind of flubbing this video a little bit, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching, so thanks guys.